Uh, welcome back to our section on pre-videos of the section. This is the video you should be watching just before your professor talks about section 1.4, calculating limits. Now, in this particular section, the whole idea behind it is to actually look at graphs and to look at some of the properties of limits that you've been doing, extending from your section 1.3 that we just covered. Now, remember, the first rule of limits is plug in a number. So if you happen to have a particular graph, here I have two graphs. I've got f of x, which is on top. There's a little hole here at negative 1 and the dots there. And i got another graph, g of x, which is the graph that's on the bottom. Here's my g of x graph here. And it's got a break. It's a discontinuous function right here at positive 1. Now, so again, looking at this idea behind visual perspectives of, gra of graphs and taking limits of those things. So our first problem here, let's see if I can blow it up for you guys, you can see it a little bit better, is to take the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side or the right side of 3 times g of x. All right. So this would be equal to 3 times. Remember, you go after the limit goes wherever the function is going. This is using your limit properties. The limit as x approaches 1 from the plus side of g of x. Now, 3 is just a constant. I'm going to hold, hold that guy over. This will be 3 times. Now, we're taking the limit as x approaches 1 from the plus side of g of x. Well, let's find g of x. It's got on the bottom. Here is 1, and here is 1 on the plus side, on the positive side of 1 right here. So if I'm going to 1, where's my functional value going? Where's my limit value going? Where's my functional value? It's going down here to... Value is negative 1. Here's 1, here's 2, negative 2 down here. Okay? So as I approach 1 from the right side or the positive side of 1, my functional value is approaching what's my y coordinate? Negative 1. Now with that 3 out front, the answer is going to be 3 times negative 1 or negative 3. This next problem is now this is a full limit. Take the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. So we're going to go to f of x. Here's f of x, the function on top, and we're going to negative 1. Now, a full limit, you've got to go from below and from above, and for a full limit to exist, the limit from below has got to be equal to the limit from above. So if I take the limit as x approaches one, negative 1 from below of f of x, here we go, what's my functional value approaching? Remember, we're not, we're not plugging in negative 1, we're plugging in a number very close to negative 1. As we get very close to negative 1, what's the functional value we're approaching? Positive 1. So over here, I can write it right here, the limit as x approaches 1 from below of f of x, that's going to positive 1. Now let's take the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. Here's 1 and on the right of the positive side, and where's my function going? Getting very close to what number is it approaching? It's also approaching 1. And since the limit from below is equal to the limit from above, we say that the limit as x approaches negative 1, the limit from above equals the limit from below. That's approaching 1. Now another one of these properties here, we want to do this. We want to take the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x times g of x. According to my limit laws, which is what this chapter is about, you go after wherever the function is. Here we got two functions. This will be the same thing as taking the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, multiplying that times the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. Now let's do this. The limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Well, here's 3 right here. And f of x. Here's my fx. It's function on top. And to get the full limit, i got to go from above and below. Of f of x, as I approach from below, I'm going to 2. As I approach 3 from above, I'm still going to 2. So my full limit on this guy would be 2 times. Now let's take the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. Now here's 3. Now as I approach 3 from below, my function is going right through the x-axis, which means that y-coordinate is 0. And from above, it's going to 0. So since above is equal to a below, because it's going towards the same number, and that number is 0, the y-coordinate, I get 0. And 2 times 0 is 0. So the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x times g of x actually would be equal to 0. 
Again, this was using the graph. We can use more of these limit properties. Again, limit is take the limit wherever the function is. We're given this information on this second part. The limit as x approaches a of h of x equals 1. The limit as x approaches a of g, f of x is equal to 10. And the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to 0. Let's calculate these things here. And so here we go. Given this information, we want to take the limit as x approaches a of h of x over f of x. Well, according to our limit laws, you go after the limit wherever the function is. This is the limit as x approaches a of f h of x divided by the limit as x approaches a of f of x. But this was given to us. The limit as x approaches a of f of x was equal to 1. And the limit as x approaches a of f of x, that was also given to us. That was equal to 10. So my answer is a one tenth. Now, this guy right here, this negative one is on the outside. So this is the limit as x approaches a of f of x raised to the negative one power. This is a power. Clean him up first. A negative one power, this is not inverse. Inverse would have been located here. This is a negative one power. And with a negative one power, algebra says we put him on the bottom. So this is the limit as x approaches a of 1 over f of x. So clean up the algebra first, and then according to our limit laws, you go after the limit wherever the function is. The limit as x approaches a of f of x is on the bottom. So it's 1 over the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Well, this would be 1 over, what is the limit as x approaches a of f of x? Well, that was given to be 10. So my answer, once again, just so happens to be 1 tenth. And regardless if it's a negative 1 power or a square root, what is a square root? A square root is also known as a half a power. But that's okay. The function is inside that square root. So according to our limit laws, that limit goes after wherever the function is. So the limit as x approaches a of the square root of f of x is the same thing as the square root of the limit as x approaches a of f of x. So that functional square root stays on the outside, and once again, that limit as x approaches a of f of x, that was given to be 10. So my answer would be the square root of 10. Again, this is an example of where we use properties of limits. That's what your professor is going to be discussing in section 1.4 with this particular material. I thought we would show you some examples of that. And one more example here because there's where we're really shooting for is these piecewise functions. But we got a theorem first. Theorem. We say that a limit exists when the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. Okay, and that's what we're talking about. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals L, if and only if, that's what the little double arrow means, when I take the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x, that'll be equal to L. That will also be equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x. So I keep telling my students that the, the, for a full limit to exist, the limit from the left has got to be equal to the limit from right. From the below has got to go from above, and they got to go towards the same number. If you got something going to two different numbers, we say the limit does not exist. Got to, for an exempt limit to exist, the limit from below has got to go to the limit from above. Now, there may be a gap in there, a hole in the graph, but that's okay. The limit from below is equal to the limit from above, so that's what the, the functional value will be, that limit. So, in this particular problem, I've given you a piecewise function h of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 1 if x does not equal 2, and uh, x minus 1 if x does equal 2. Okay? I want to know is, what is the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x? Well, here we go. For, for to get the limit, you need to, for a full limit to exist, we have got to do this one side limit. So I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 2 from below of h of x, and I'm also going to do this limit as x approaches 2 from above of h of x. Now, this is understanding piecewise functions. So I'm going to be plugging in numbers slightly less than 2, 2 from below. That will be numbers like 1.9, 1.99, so forth and so on. If I'm plugging in numbers like 1.9, 1.99, which piece of my piecewise function do I get to use, the top or bottom? I get to use the top when x is not equal to 2, and I use the bottom when x equals 2. So here we go. 
If x is uh, 1.9, that's not 2, so I get to plug it into this function. So this will be equal to the limit as x approaches 2 from below of x squared plus 3x minus 1. Now, even though it's a one-sided limit, and we can do a little tart, a t-bar if we wanted to, the fact of the matter is, look at this particular piece of the function, x squared plus 3x minus 1. This is a classic quadratic. It doesn't have any domain issues or anything. First rule of limits is plug in the number if you don't have a problem. So this would be 2 squared, because I'm going to 2, slightly from below granted, but I'm going after 2. So plug in 2. 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 1. That gives me 4 plus 6 minus 1. That's equal to 9. The limit from below is 9. Now, we want to do it again. That the limit as x approaches 2 from above. This means I'm going to be plugging numbers like 2.1, 2.01, 2.01, slightly bigger than 2. We're not plugging in 2. We're slightly plugging in numbers slightly bigger than 2. So this will be the limit as x approaches 2 from above of, well, if I'm plugging in numbers like 2.1 and 2.01, slightly bigger than 2, which piece of my piecewise function do I get to use, top or bottom? Well, since x is not equal to 2, 2.1 is not 2, I'm using the top function again. So that would be x squared plus 3x minus 1. So now I'll take the limit as x approaches 2 from the plus side of x squared plus 3x minus 1. But again, since x squared plus 3x minus 1 is a quadratic, there's no domain issues at all. And I'm taking the limit as x approaches 2. First rule of limits, plug in a number. I'm going to plug in 2. That'll give me 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 1, which once again is 4 plus 6 minus 1, which equals 9. And since the limit from below is going to 9 and the limit from above is going to 9, the question is, what is the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x? Well, the limit from below equals the limit from above. That's equal to 9, so my answer is 9. However, if this answer was not 9, and this answer was like 10 or 11 or something other than 9, the limit from below would not equal the limit from above, and then we would say the answer is D and E, does not exist. Again, this section 1.4 is about calculating limits, and we can calculate limits through graphs, through properties, and especially through looking at definitions and theorems and especially with piecewise functions. So that's what this section is about. So that's what your professor will be discussing with you guys on section 1.4. I hope this has been helpful.